As much as it totally pains me to do another Smollett video, I just can't pass this one up. Before we check out the clip, I just wanted to take a second and thank all my supporters who have donated to me through Patreon and through PayPal. If you enjoy my content and you agree with my message, I humbly request that you head over to my Patreon channel and consider subscribing. Ever since YouTube demonetized my channel back during the State of the Union speech, it's only thanks to my subscribers and my supporters that I've been able to keep doing this. When YouTube comes after channels like mine, they're doing it in the hopes that I'll just stop making content, and I have no doubt that they want to put channels like mine down before the 2020 election. If you want me to continue holding media accountable and continue to cover left-wing protests, then it is crucial that I get your support on Patreon or on PayPal. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your consideration. Right, President Superlative at it again. I mean, look, Joy, it is the height of irony to have President Trump make any kind of comment about Jesse Smollett um, before we found out um, that it was an alleged hoax, and then he tweeted against him when it, when it came out. The reason why so many people were so quick to believe Jesse Smollett and what he said and his, his version of events before they all unraveled was because that man who you just played feeds into and actually stokes the atmosphere of menace and insecurity that millions of Americans feel across this country. What the hell is Capehart talking about here? The height of irony? Did Trump fake a hate crime that I'm not aware of? And no, Trump does not stoke these kind of actions. If Trump were actually out there inciting hatred and stoking racial resentment, you wouldn't have to fake hate crimes. As far as I know, Trump has never said or done anything to give any minority group in this country a reason to think that he has targeted them or for them to feel any sort of menace. In fact, things are looking pretty good for minorities in this country. The jobs numbers for black Americans and Hispanic Americans have never looked this good. But it doesn't surprise me that the Democrats or the media would want to either not cover the jobs numbers or to demonize Trump to take people's attention away from that. Because the more that people are not relying on the government, the more they're likely to vote Republican. It's people like Jonathan Capehart here that won't allow race relations in this country to ever heal. I don't know about you, but I live in a very mixed neighborhood, and I don't have any troubles getting along with anybody. Everybody's friendly, everybody's courteous and respectful. When I go to the grocery store, it's a very mixed group of people, and there's no issue. I, so I don't know what world Capehart is living in, unless it's completely manufactured uh, in service of an agenda. Capehart gets on TV every night, and his job is to instill fear and paranoia of white people in minority groups in this country. Whether they are people of color, LGBTQ, trans people, immigrants, dreamers, you just go down the list. There are people in this country who every day feel that their very existence, their own security is at stake. Again, I don't see why any of these groups would feel threatened because of anything Trump has said or done, except for people that are in the country illegally. If you're in the country illegally, yeah, you probably should feel guilty and you probably should go and come back the right way. Yes, Trump wants to keep trans people out of the military, but I do not see this as inherently anti-trans. If you try to join the military and you have tubes in your ears or you have flat feet, they're not going to let you in. I think you could probably make an argument either way, but my point is that there's no reason why any minority groups in the country should feel threatened or a sense of menace just because we're limiting the people that can get into the military. The president's super PAC, uh, right-wingers, far-right conservatives who are using the Jesse Smollett situation to um, rhetorically bash people who are afraid for their, for their own existence and their own lives, you know, is really despicable. And no, actually, Capehart, it's not just the Smollett hoax. It's just one in a long line of other hoaxes that are covered up until the point that they're exposed, and then suddenly you all lose interest in them.
The media, the left, and the Democrat Party actively use racial fear-mongering as a way to make minorities in this country believe that most white people hate them and are actively out to make their lives harder. I'm here to tell you as an evil right-winger that we don't hate you and we're not trying to make your life harder. We're just trying to survive ourselves. On Friday, all of us awoke to the story of Hassan. That the, the guy at the Coast Guard, the self-proclaimed white supremacist who had a cache of weapons, you talked about it at the top of the show, Joy, had a cache of weapons and a list of politicians and journalists he wanted to target and to kill. This is what we're talking about. This is what I'm talking about when I mentioned the atmosphere of menace. Yeah, that guy is a nut job and a wannabe terrorist, and I'm glad they got him. But he didn't hurt anybody. If you want to talk about somebody that's actually done some damage, look at the Democrat Bernie supporter that opened up on a GOP baseball game and almost assassinated half of the Republican Senate. Interestingly enough, nobody in the media ever blamed themselves for inciting that attack, and really they moved right on from that story, never to be spoken of again. In fact, go Google some stories about that incident, and you'll be hard-pressed to find any of them that lists the shooter as a Democrat. What about all the physical violence from the left that's been going on since before the election? For some strange reason, there was very minimal coverage of that violence, and when they did cover it, they were never assigning blame to anybody in the Democrat Party or in the media.